How are you guys doing? It is Wednesday, August 19th, 2020, out here in this quarantine. Um, and for today, I'm just going to jump into everything that's happened yesterday, uh, Tuesday, everything that's going on with Champions League, with ba- playoff basketball, playoff hockey, the WNBA, everything that's going on there. So I'm going to start off with this. Um, Paris Saint-Germain beat RB Red Bull Leipzig yesterday in the, U- in the UEFA Champions League semifinals. And after beating them 3 nothing, PSG will advance to the final and they will play against the winner of Lyon and Bayern. Bayern Munich and they play today at three o'clock. So basically in this game, um, first goal was a goal. It was a, it was a basically a goal off of a free kick from Angel Di Maria. He assisted it off of Marquinhos in the 13th minute Uh, that put them above. The second goal would be an Angel Di Maria one-on-one against the goalie off of an assist from Neymar. And the third goal would be by Juan Bernat in the 56th minute off an assist from Angel Di Maria. Um, the performer of the game, of course, was Angel Di Maria. He finished with a goal and two assists on the day. And I'd probably say the goal of the game was probably the third one that put that put him out of reach. It was just a beautiful, just a beautiful goal, just off the foot of Angel Di Maria and off the chest of Juan Bernat. And with this win, um, PSG will now advance to play against the winner of Lyon and Bayern Munich, who just, like I said, they will play at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time today. Um, but right now I'm going to jump into playoff basketball, um, day two of what's been going on, as it did start Monday, so Tuesday is day two. First off, the eight seed Orlando Magic were able to pull off a 12 point win to beat the first seed Milwaukee Bucks 122 to 110. First off, starting with Milwaukee, their elite forward Giannis Antetokounmpo had finished the game with 31 points, 17 rebounds, and seven assists, while also logging five turnovers, shooting 12 for 25 from the field, three for seven from the three line, and four for nine from the free throw line. Um, Chris Middleton finished with 14, Eric Bledsoe had 15. Um, and George Hill would finish with 16 off the bench. For the Orlando Magic, their bigger their big performance would come from their center, Nikola Vucevic, who would finish with 35 points, um, 14 rebounds, five turnovers, uh, four assists. He shot 15 for 24 from the field, five for eight from the three line. And additionally, um, Clark was able to add 15. Same with Markel Fultz and Terrence Ross added in 18 points off the bench. With this win, the Orlando Magic, are they now have a 1-0 series lead over the Milwaukee Bucks. Following that, the fifth seed Miami Heat were able to beat the fourth seed Indiana Pacers 113-101. to um, For the Pacers, TJ Warren would finish with 22 points and 8 rebounds, shooting 9 for 18 from the field. Additionally, Malcolm Brogdon, their point guard, would finish with 22 points and 10 assists. He shot 6 for 18 from the field but made 9 of his 10 free throws. Um, and then for the Miami Heat, it would be um, it would be Bam Adebayo, their forward, with 17 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists, shooting 7 for 14 from the field. Additionally, their point guard, Goran Dragic, would score 24 points in 34 minutes, along with 6 rebounds and 5 assists. And their biggest performance, and, and their... And, um, their best performance of the day came from Jimmy Butler, their small forward, who finished with 28 points, uh, 3 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 steals, and 2 blocks, shooting 8 for 15 from the field, making both of his threes, and he made 10 of his 12 free throws from the line. And with this win, Miami now leads that series 1-0. In the bubble's third game of the night, the Houston Rockets, the fourth seed, were able to beat the fifth seed Oklahoma City Thunder 123 to 108 last night without Russell Westbrook. Um, for the Thunder, their big performance would come from Danilo Gallinari, their forward. He finished with 29 points, three rebounds, three assists, shooting nine for 17 from the field. Um, their elite point guard Chris Paul would finish with 20 points, uh, 10 rebounds, and nine assists as he shot seven for 14 from the field. Um, for the Houston Rockets, their big performer of the night would be. James Harden, he finished with 37 points, 11 rebounds, and three assists as he shot 12 for 22 from the field, six for 13 from the free and he, from the three point line, and he made seven of his eight free throws on the night. With this series, the Houston Rockets now lead the series against the Oklahoma City Thunder one nothing. And last but not least, going to our last game of the night. The eight seed Portland Trailblazers were able to beat the top seed Los Angeles Lakers. Um, for the Lakers, Anthony Davis would have a big game. He finished with 28 points, 11 rebounds, 
uh, two steals and two blocks on the day, shooting eight for 12 from the field, 0 for five from the three point line and 12 for 17 from the free throw line. Um, the Lakers go shooting for a small forward, LeBron James, who finished with 23 points, 17 rebounds and 16 assists in a losing performance. Where they would go, he would shoot nine for twenty from the field, one for five from the three point line, four for seven from the free from the free throw line. I mean, he did everything he could, but they just couldn't win. Um, going to the Trailblazers, big game for Carmelo Anthony, who finished with eleven and ten. Um, Yusuf Nurkic finished with sixteen points. C.J. McCollum finished with twenty one points and five rebounds. Damian Lillard, the bubble MVP, finished with 34 points, shooting 9 for 21 from the field, 6 for 13 from 3, making all 10 of his free throws. He also added in four or, or five rebounds and five assists. Big game from him. Gary Trent Jr. to me would have the play of the game as he iced the Lakers in the last seconds with about a minute and 20 seconds to go or something like that. He was able to bury the Lakers and give the Portland Trail Blazers the lead in the series, a probably unlikely lead over the Lakers in this playoffs. So that's what happened yesterday. And just to give you a little look, a little, just to give you a glimpse into what to look forward to today. First off, the Brooklyn Nets will take on the Toronto Raptors for game two on TNT, or I'm sorry, on NBA TV, as Toronto currently leads that series 1-0. The Jazz are going to take on the Nuggets for game two at four o'clock. Denver currently leads that series one nothing. Um, at 6.30, the six seed Philadelphia 76ers are looking to even up their series with the Boston Celtics on TNT as Boston leads that series one nothing. And the last game of the night is going to be between the Mavericks and the Clippers. Hopefully, Chris Ops Porzingis will play the whole game as the Clippers currently lead that series one nothing as they look to go up 2 nothing. Um, that's currently what's going on with basketball. Right now, I'm going to jump to baseball, show you what's going on in the major leagues. Um, starting off in the American League, National League West, the Houston Astros hosted the Colorado Rockies and were able to beat them 2-1. to one. All three of the runs scored were in extra innings. Um, Senzatello would make the start for Colorado as he struck out six and only allowed three hits and allowed zero runs in eight innings. For the Rockies and for the Houston Astros, Zach Greinke would strike out seven, only allow three hitters and eight innings pitched. Um, but in the end of the game, it was Straw, the center fielder, it was all, or who got the game-winning um, walk-off single. Miles Straw was able to get the Rockies that big win. And now with this win, the Rockies are now sitting at 13-10. and 10 And another, another big thing that happened, Alex Bregman reached base safely for the 39th consecutive game. Um, additionally, their second baseman, Jose Altuve, finished 0 for 4 for the Colorado Rockies. Charlie Blackman went 1 for 4 from the day. Their third baseman, Nolan Arenado, would also go 1 for 4 for the day. Big game from both these two teams and the Astros right now. We're starting to make a run at the Oakland A's. Uh, speaking of the Oakland A's, they were playing in um, Arizona as they faced off against the Diamondbacks. And the Diamondbacks were able to beat them 10 to 1 after scoring, 10 of their, after scoring 9 of their 10 runs in the first inning or in the first two innings. Right fielder Cole Calhoun would hit his seventh home run of the season as he finished two for four with an RBI and two runs. Um, for the A's, their elite third baseman Matt Chapman would finish 0 for two with a walk and two strikeouts for the day. With this win, the Diamondbacks are now 13 and 11 as the Oakland A's are now 16 and eight. Moving out to Dallas, the Texas Rangers hosted the San Diego Padres. The Padres were able to beat them 6-4 to four after a big first run fourth inning from the San Diego Padres. Um, with this loss, the Rangers now drop to 10-12 and 12 as the Padres now jump up to 13-2. and two. For the Padres, their elite shortstop, Fernando Tatis Jr., the, who I think is the leading frontrunner for the NL MVP right now, he finished 2-5 for five with a run. Their elite third baseman, Manny Machado, would finish 2-4 for four with a run as well. Um, Will Myers, the right fielder, would finish with four RBIs on the day as he hit a grand slam in the first inning. Um, big game for him. Um, and with this win, the Padres are moving in closer towards the Los Angeles Dodgers, who hosted the Seattle Mariners and beat them 2-1 to one yesterday. And with this win, the Dodgers are now sitting at 18-7, and seven, and the Mariners now drop to 7-18. and 18. Um, for the Dodgers, both their RBIs will come from, one will come from Corey Seager, the other one will come from Justin Turner. Their elite right fielder, Mookie Betts, would finish 0 for 4 on the day. 
Um, Blake Trinan would get the win for the Dodgers as Gonsolin made the start. Um, he only he allowed no runs in six innings pitched, striking out three. While Marco Gonzalez struck out nine Dodgers, only allowed one run in seven innings. Great pitching performances from both guys. Um, and also for the Dodgers, their elite center fielder, Cody Bellinger, would go 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. But it's a good win for the Dodgers. And just keeping it out, even in L.A., the Los Angeles Angels host the, the San Francisco Giants. And the Giants were able, were able to best the Los Angeles Angels and beat them 8-2. to two. Um, Big game from Pablo Sandoval, Kung Fu Panda, their designated hitter, would finish 2-4 for four with three RBIs and one run. Um, as he hit his first home run of the season, and you, and Mike Yastrzemski would hit his first, would hit his sixth home run of the season. As the Giants are now sitting at nine and sixteen, the Angels now drop to eight and sixteen. Um, for the Angels, their center fielder Mike Trout finished zero for two with a run on the day and two walks. Um, Anthony Rendon would finish two for four. But once again, it's another loss for the Angels. Right now, I'm about to jump into the Central. First, starting off in Pittsburgh, as the Cleveland Indians were able to beat the Pirates ten or in the tenth inning, six to three, after scoring three runs in the tenth. A um, big game from there. First baseman Carlos Santana. Carlos Santana would finish the game two for five with five RBIs and a run as he had his second home run of the season. Um, for the Indians, their elite shortstop, Francisco Lindor, would finish one for two with two runs on the day. Um, and with this win, the Indians are now 14-9 and nine as the Pittsburgh Pirates drop to 4-15. and 15. Um, Not that great of a start for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jumping out to yet another AL-NL Central matchup, the Minnesota Twins were able to beat the Milwaukee Brewers in 12 innings. They beat them 4-3 to three last night after the Brewers... Um, they scored three runs in the ninth, but at the end of the day, um, the game, the wa- the walk off hit would go to Jorge Polanco, who reached on a fielder's choice. Byron Buxton would score for the Twins, and now the Twins are sitting at sixteen and eight, while the Brewers dropped to ten and eleven. Great pitching performance from their starter Kenta Maeda, who would only allow one hit, one run. He struck out 12 batters in eight innings. Great pitching performance for him, and the Twins eventually got the win. I mean, it was it was it was just amazing. The Brewers didn't score until Kenta Maeda was a fish, un, until he was pulled, but once again, great game from Kenta Maeda. Um, Burns would start for the Brewers. He would also he would also have a really really good start. He would only allow one run in five innings, but like I said, with this loss, the Brewers now drop to ten and eleven, and the Minnesota Twins are now sitting at sixteen and eight. Now jumping out to the American League Central, the Chicago White Sox were able to beat the Detroit Tigers 10 to 4 yesterday. Um Seas would get the win for the White Sox as he only allowed two runs in 6.1 innings. Um for them for the White Sox, I mean. Tim Anderson would get his fifth home run of the season as he finished four for five with three RBIs and three runs for the Chicago White Sox. Amazing game for him, I mean, but that that's Tim Anderson doing usually what Tim Anderson does. Um, with this loss, the Tigers are now sitting at nine and twelve, and the White Sox are now thirteen and eleven. And now going out and staying in Chicago, but moving to the National League Central, the Chicago Cubs hosted the St. Louis Cardinals last night, um, and they beat them six to three. Um, and Yu Darvish would pick up his fourth win of the season. He, as he allowed only one run, struck out seven in six innings pitched. Ponce de Leon would pick up his second loss for the Cardinals. Um, Schwarber would get his fourth home run of the season as he finished one for four with two RBIs um, for the Cardinals. Um, Paul Goldschmidt, their elite first baseman, would go three for four with an RBI and a run. With this loss, the Cardinals are sitting at five and six, and the Chicago Cubs are now 15 and seven. Now, last but not least, jump into the East, starting with the American League. The Yankees hosted the Rays last night, and the Rays were able to best them. They are now sitting at 15 and 9 after beating the Yankees 6 to 3. The Yankees are now 16 and 7. Blake Snell picked up his second win as he allowed three runs and five innings pitched. Masahiro Tanaka would pick up his first loss as he allowed five runs and four innings. Gary Sanchez would hit his fifth home run of the season for the Yankees. He finished one for three with an RBI and three runs. Glaber Torres would finish 0 for 4 as he struck out twice. For the Tampa Bay Rays, Brandon Lau will get his eighth home run of the season, their right fielder, as he finished one for three with three RBIs and a run. Um, Austin Meadows would get his third home run of the season as he finished two for four with an RBI and a run. Big win for the Rays, and 
and like I said, they're now sitting at 15 and 9 as they move even closer to the New York Yankees who are sitting at the top. Now, jumping to Boston as they hosted the Philadelphia Phillies last night. Um, the Boston Red Sox were able, they allowed 13 runs to the Phillies, and the Phillies are now sitting at 9 and 9 after besting the Red Sox. The Red Sox dropped to 6 and 18. Um, for the Phillies, Reese Hoskins would hit his first home run of the season. Um, as he would finish one for three with an RBI and two runs on the day. Bryce Harper, the Phillies elite outfielder who was playing um, in right field today, he finished two for five with three RBIs and two runs on the day uh, for the Phillies. Additionally, Goslin would hit his third home run. Um, Jay Bruce would hit his fourth. Big game overall for the Phillies. They scored seven in the sixth inning. And they are moving even closer to the Atlanta Braves and the Miami Marlins at the top as the Red Sox fall even further from the top. Um, additionally, the Buffalo Blue Jays and the Baltimore Orioles went to extra innings in the 10th. And this game was eventually ended um, by a Lourdes Goriel fielder's choice where um, I believe it was Travis Scott. No, Travis Shaw was the one that scored. And the Blue Jays, after scoring five runs in the fifth inning, were able to best the Baltimore Orioles. Um, big game from Randall Gritchick as he hit his fourth home run of the season. Um, the designated hitter went two for five with four RBIs on the day. Travis Shaw also fin he finished with three RBIs on the day. Big day for the Blue Jays. Um, for the Orioles, Santander would, hit with, would finish three for five with three RBIs on the day. Um, big game for him. Big win for the Blue Jays, especially, especially when it finishes out like that. And last but not least, finishing out in the NL East, um, the Miami Marlins hosted the New York Mets, and the Mets were able to get the best of them as the Mets beat them 8-3. to three. Um, Big game from J.D. Davis. He, finished, he, is, he hit his fourth home run of the season. Same with Nimmo. Mets elite first baseman Pete Alonso would finish one for three with a run on the day. Um, and with this loss, the Miami Marlins are now sitting at nine and eight, and the Mets are sitting at 11 and four. In the last game of the night, the Washington Nationals were able to get the best of the Atlanta Braves. They beat them eight to five last night. Um, for the Washington Nationals, um, Eric Thames would finish two for five with three RBIs. He had a pretty, pretty big game. Um, their elite left fielder, Juan Soto, would finish two for four with an RBI and a run for the Washington Nationals. For the Atlanta Braves, their shortstop, Dansby Swanson, would finish two for five with two runs on the day. Their elite first baseman, Freddie Freeman, would hit his fourth home run of the season as he finished two for four with two RBIs and a run um, on the season. Additionally, right fielder Marcelo Zuna would finish two for five. Austin Riley, the Braves third baseman, would finish one for three with two RBIs. With this win, the Nationals are now sitting at nine and two as the Braves still have the lead in the National League East, and they're sitting at 14 and 11 right now. And just to give you a glimpse into what games to look forward to in baseball today, um, especially on Wednesday because it's the middle of the week, some series are ending today. Um, first off, Tanner Roark's going to try to get a start as the Blue Jays face off against the Orioles at 1 o'clock. Also, Jake Arrieta is looking for his second win with the Phillies this year as they face off against the Red Sox, who are the worst team in the AL East. Um, Jack Flaherty is looking to get his second start as the Cardinals face the Cubs again, and he's facing off against Mills, who's had a couple really good starts. Um, Luis Castillo is going to try to face off against Brad Keller as the Reds play the Royals at 5 o'clock. Um, Garrett Cole is going to try to get his fifth win of the season as they face off against Tyler Glass now in the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, Kyle Wright's looking for his first win as the Nats play the Braves. Jacob DeGrom's looking for his third win of the season as the Mets face off against the Marlins at seven. Um, Casey Mize is making his debut for the Tigers. He was the 2018 first overall draft pick in the, M in the MLB draft. Lance Lynn is looking for his fourth win as he faces off, as the Rangers face off against Chris Paddock and the Padres. Um, Merrill Kelly is looking for yet another win as he faces off against Jesus Lazardo as the Diamondbacks face off against the Athletics. Um, Julio, or, yeah, Urias is looking for his third win as he faces off against Taiwan Walker and the Seattle Mariners at 940. Um, Sandoval is looking to face off against Johnny Cueto as the Angels face off against the Giants at 945. Um, those are the games for today. And also, the Cubs and Cardinals, along with the Reds and the Royals, are both having doubleheaders today. So... 
And Trevor Bauer is going to make, he's going to start for the second game for the Reds today as they face off against the Royals. So with that all said, I'm going to make this last jump to show you what's been going on in hockey, what's been going on in that bubble, um, as they're still dealing with first round matchups in the Stanley Cup first round. Um, first off, the Philadelphia Flyers were able to beat the Montreal Canadiens. They now lead that series 3-1, to one, um, led by their goalie, um, Carter Hart. He finished, I mean, he, I mean, he finished basically perfect. He allowed no goals in this game. Um, big win. They needed this to advance. Um, the Dallas Stars were able to beat the Calgary Flames in Game 5 as they now take a 3-2 series lead. Um, led by Klinberg as he got a goal for them as the Stars now take a 2-1 lead or the 3-2 lead over the Flames with a 2-1 win. Also, the Washington Capitals were able to keep the New York Islanders from sweeping them after being after rallying from down 2-0 to win 3-2. Alex Ovechkin would finish with two goals in the game as the Capitals got their first win of the playoffs, but they're still three wins away from clinching the next round. Um, also, the Vegas Golden Knights were the, are the first Stanley Cup team to clinch the second round of the playoffs as they beat the Chicago Blackhawks 4-3 to um, as, they, as they scored a goal in the last period to eventually go up and above. Their left winger, Max Pacioretty, would finish with a goal and an assist on the night to help the, no, to help the Vegas Golden Knights advance. So now looking forward to what's going on today. The Tampa Bay Lightning face off against the Columbus Blue Jackets in game five. The Blue Jacket or the Lightning currently lead that series three to one. That game is at noon. At four o'clock, the Boston Bruins look to win their series against the Carolina Hurricanes as they lead that series three to one. This is game five. Um, the Coyotes and Avalanche go in their game five. They have their game five at 530 as the Avalanche look to take the, they look to win this series tonight. Um, additionally, the Flyers lead the Canadians three to one as they look to take that series at eight o'clock. And the last game at 1030 is going to be between the Vancouver Canucks and the defending champion St. Louis Blues. Right now they're in game five and that series is currently tied at two. And those are the games for NHL. And last but not least, jumping out into the WNBA just to give you a little bit of insight into the games that happened last night. First off, um, the Connecticut Sun were able to beat the Indiana Fever last night. Dewana Bonner finished with 28 points to help the Sun get their fifth win of the season. Also, the Chicago Sky were able to beat the Vegas Aces by two, um, 84 to 82. Courtney Vandersloot finished with 15 points and 15 assists. Big game for her um, as the Aces now drop to eight and three overall. And then the Storm were able to get yet another win on the Liberty as the Storm are now 11-1. and one. St uh, Epiphany Prince finished with 16 points. Kia Nurse dropped 21 points for the Liberty, but the Liberty are now sitting at 1-10 on the season. Looking forward to what's going on today. The Atlanta Dream are going to take on the DC Mystics at 7 o'clock. Um, the Wings are going to take on the Lynx at 9 o'clock. And the Mercury are going to take on the Sparks at 10. But with that said, I want to thank you. I appreciate you for listening to all 22, 23 minutes of this piece. Um, once again, it is Wednesday, August 19th, 2020. This is The Elite. I'm James Sims. I want to thank you for hearing my piece. Uh, peace out.